goal, calling, destiny, um, and legacy. Uh, job and career is what you do to make money. Some people are good at their jobs. Some people are bad at their jobs. Some people like their jobs. Some people don't like their jobs. Uh, it's distinct from your calling, but they can inter... Well, it doesn't have to be distinct from, uh, from your calling, but there are three ways that calling can intersect or not intersect with job and career. Uh, I'll get back to that in a minute. Your role are the, relations, the, the, the relationships you have in your life, mother, uh, daughter, wife. Um, they are not your calling, although they impact your calling. Then we get to calling, and calling is the summons on your life, and that summons is from God himself, and he's beckoning you, he's inviting you to move into that thing that he created for you to do and to be. Before you were even born, he looked at you, and he didn't just love you, because he has to love you because he's God, and God is love, but he likes you, he likes how he made you, and he has something specific for you to do. Now, I said that calling intersects with job and career in one of three ways. And this is important after tonight, because when you're done with this, you're going to have to figure out, okay, if I have an idea with, about my calling, what, how does it intersect my job and career? Well, it could be in one of three ways. Number one, they can be completely separate. Your job, your career, and then your calling can be completely um, unrelated to each other, and that's okay. And it might, that actually just might be true of you. It's where your job or your career is the thing that finances your calling. <laughs> now, honestly, if you've got a full-time job or you're working on a career, excuse me, <coughs> um, you're not going to have as much time to engage in your calling, but that doesn't mean you can't. So that's one of the ways they can intersect. The second way they can intersect is they touch on each other. You have a job or career, you're earning money, and maybe you like that job, but you, when you realize what your calling is, you realize, oh, that can play a part. That can somehow intersect with what I do for a living. You'll have to decide if that's the case. And then the third way is when you say, you know what, they are absolutely one in the same. I, this, this job I'm doing, this career I'm pursuing is the call of God in my life. And through this job and career, I am pursuing love, which enables somebody else to be healed or the world to be changed in a positive way. Destiny is your calling on steroids. Destiny is uh, your calling in its final iteration. Destiny is the uh, ultimate destination that your calling is leading you to. When you reach your destiny, you, you should be um, on all cylinders, working on all cylinders, and life change happening all around you if you're pursuing, if you start pursuing your calling and it develops into your destiny. And if you do that, for anyone who pursues their calling and moves into the world to bring healing, you will leave a legacy behind you. People's lives are changed, the world has changed in some way. So those are the definition of terms, but the reason why we're gathered is not just to learn about what these different terms mean, but we're trying to figure out what your destiny is. We uh, said early on, I said early on, that you can discover it at the intersection of two massive truths. One of them is terrible, one of them is wonderful. One of them is awful, one of them is awesome. The awful truth is that the world is broken in, I believe, in six distinct ways. People are alienated from God. People hate each other. People are, there's injustice everywhere. I've got, I'm going out of order in my mind, so I'm going to forget something. People are isolated, the decay of the planet and pain. I think I got them all. The broken places of this world, this is the awful truth. But the awesome truth is that you are incredible. Has anyone told you that yet today? Can I tell you, you're wonderful. You're ab look, come on, you're wonderful. You are. Um, because God made you, he likes you. He doesn't just love you, he likes you. And you are unique and wonderful in four uh, areas of your life that we look, we've been looking at. First of all, you have a unique and powerful life story that no one else, and yes, it's powerful. Uh, I think somebody said to me last week, and I've, I've, I hear this everywhere, everywhere I do this workshop, people say, well, I don't have any bad things that have happened to me, so, you know, where's the wonder? Like, 
well, hello, let's talk about the, what, the, the beautiful life you had. And there's, is there, what can you do with that beautiful life? Because there are a lot of people who don't have it. Can you show them what it looks like? So whether you have pain in your life or whether you have wonder in your life and joy, it all can be used by God for you to move into the world and change people's lives. Your life story is unique. So is your personality. You ones, you twos, you threes, you fours, you fives, you six, you sevens, you eights, and you nines. You're all very unique. And that plays a part in your calling as well. And then you have some skills that you've learned along the way. Maybe, maybe they're innate skills, relational skills. I think you talked about this last week. Some of you uh, relationally are really good one-on-one, -on -one, and some of you relationally are good with a, gr a group. You can lead a group anywhere, and some of you could stand up like I am right now, and you could fill a room. You have that capacity, and some of you don't do any of the three. What you do is write and change people's lives. So what is your relational skill set? Do you have manual skills? Do you have technological still skills? Um, those skills play a part in your calling. And then finally, of your passions. It's getting down to the nub of it. What is it? And, and remember, I, you can have passions that are self-serving, and that's perfectly fine. They would be hobbies, or if you want to get, uh, use a bigger word, you, that's your avocation. That's one of the reasons why I'm frazzled, because the entire family came over for dinner, and I cooked the entire dinner. And it was, and it was, uh, and it was, uh, it was all Mexican food because it's, it's uh, Cinco de Mayo. And no, I didn't have any margaritas. I just made it for them. <laughs> so uh, here I am, margarita-less. Um, but, but that's my hobby. That's my avocation. I, I, I love it. But it doesn't necessarily ch I mean, my, everyone said, thanks, Dad. You know, and it, they enjoyed it. But it's not changing the world. It's not. Um, I also love musical theater, but that's not going to change the world because I love musical theater. What is your avocation? What is your hobby? Those are wonderful. But a passion that's directed outward, a passion that is contribution, a passion that is love, a passion that, le look, when you look at the world and you see some injustice or you see somebody lonely or you see somebody in pain or you see somebody struggling with racism or or, or the world falling apart, or especially people alienated from the God of the universe, what passions arise in you? That may be the nub of where we need to start when we talk about your calling, and that's what we're going to do right now. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, a little process uh, um, thing I'm going to try tonight. When I have done this workshop in the past, I have... Uh, I, when I get to this point of the workshop, I usually bring, either bring one person up on stage and do a demonstration of their calling quilt, and I usually work ahead of, uh, um, ahead of time with them, and then I show you, and I walk through it, and it's, it, it's a demonstration for you to how to figure yours, yours out. Um, other times, I, I now have two demonstrations on video that I have uh, made, and you're welcome to watch them. One of them is on our web, the Grace Church website because it's the one I did with Cassie Anderson. Um, so last Wednesday, I was, tell, there was, I was in a group. I spoke at a conference, uh, Heartbeat International, their national conference, and they had a day uh, before the conference started for a value-add workshop, and they had about five or six different speakers doing workshops, and they invited me to do uh, this workshop. I got to the end of the time, and I said... Hey guys, I have this video uh, of a sample of me doing this with somebody. With, and, and then I said, and I'm going to take a vote. Um, how many of you would like to uh, watch this? I said, it's a little long, but I think it's interesting and it'll hold your attention and it'll give you an illustration of how one takes all this data about your life story and your personality and your calling and, or excuse me, your uh, skills and your passions. And you'll see me do this with a person. And I said, but here's something else I'll offer to you. If, if you don't want to do that, I'd be happy to actually demonstrate with as many people as I have time for in the room and do a really on-the-spot analysis. And they went, they all raised their hands, and they all, they all wanted to do that. And so uh, 
It was amazing. And so I'm going to offer to do that tonight. Um, now, what... <laughs> she's already raising her hand. Here's the deal. I'm, I don't know how many. I cannot do many. And what you'll get is a pretty truncated version, okay? But I'll do my best with a few of you to show you how we go about this process. But what I want to do um, first is I want you to turn to se session six. And I am quite sure you've already started already thinking about this over the last five. Have we been at this five weeks? It's a bit, wow. Um, look at session six. Let's, let's get you looking at your data and look at your calling quilt as it stands right now. What threads or themes weave in and out, weave in and out of your life story, your personality, your skills, or your passions? Um, something that shows up in your skills, oh, you notice it in your life story, or some sort of correlation to something about your passion shows up in your personality. Uh, so look at your calling quilt, and I'm just going to give you a second right now just to look at it and see if there are any threads or themes that weave in and out of those four elements of your life. Usually it's a surprise because you hadn't thought about this before. But there's something there that you go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that about me. Those threads or themes that, are, that weave in and out of your life are clues. They're like, it's like breadcrumbs that you can follow to your calling. Do you see any? Here's another, look at the next series, series of questions. When you're looking to discover your calling or your destiny from your life story, look for deep emotion. Look for intense statements and feelings. Like, look at your life story and, and see, it, was there something that, like, this was the high point of my life? Or this was the lowest moment of my life? The reason why is at those high points and at those points, low points, stuff happens to us. Decisions are made, whether we know it or not. Um, our... our it's almost like our calling gets set at that moment. Look for the intense emotion, the intense highs, and the intense lows. Um, when you look at a person that you have in your life story, somebody that you'll say, I'll never forget him, I'll never forget her. When there's somebody like that in your life, it is highly likely that, watch this, that that which drove them probably will start to drive you because you admire them so much and you want to follow in their footsteps and their calling may end up being your calling. That happens many, many, many times. I'm not saying it's true with you, but it happens with many people. That that intense person who poured into your life, um, like this, um, uh, this Indian, uh, British Indian woman that I'm, that I'm working with, lives in London, when she talked about her uncle and his approach to the Nepalese people, and she's Nepalese by, um, by birth, um, um, she wants to be like him in, in as many ways as she can, and her calling likely is going to mimic his. Um, a huge turning point in your life or something you learned uh, about yourself that has just found its way into your soul. Look for these intense statements and ask yourself, could a calling be buried in there or could a calling emerge out of that intensity in my life? And then this next series of questions, pay attention to your pain or your brokenness. Um, how many of you are realizing now that people seek you out because well, they don't know this, but people seek you out in some ways as relates to the pain that you've experienced in your life. And I, just out of curiosity, how many people have that happen to you? Somebody approaches you because of the pain in your life. Um, and they may not even know. Now, you know why that's happening. Let's just, let's be honest why that's happening. 
There you are, minding your own business. Somebody enters into your life randomly or through existing relationships or organizations or community, whatever it is. They enter into your life and they start, you hit up, a, you get into a conversation, you get to know one another, and then you realize that the need of their life, you're going, oh, wow. What she's going through or what he's going through is what I went through. And you can go, how crazy is that? Or you can say, how gracious is God? Because he knows you're able to handle that. He knows that, you, he knows that you've gone through it. Or come. Now, listen, I know some of you are thinking, well, I haven't really gone through it yet. I'm still healing. That's okay. And there are sometimes I have to look at a person and say, you maybe need to get healed up a little bit more before you start engaging your calling. But look, listen, when you start to understand your calling, God knows that and he'll send people your way. Look for that. If that's happening to you, relish those moments. And then start, you're going to see it everywhere. Um, do you feel a particular affinity with those who have suffered in the same ways as you? I'm guess you'd, I guess you do. You probably have a, a, a similar affinity with someone. Uh, who has, uh, is there a brokenness that you see more clearly because of your life experiences? You didn't understand it, but now because you've gone through it, you understand this brokenness and you have, you have a clarity about it that other people do not have. For example, I mean, this is a really intense one. Anyone who's lost a child, it's a, it's a horrific thing to go through. I've never experienced it. So when people come to me, and many times people come to me to seek counsel, I can, I can sympathize with them, but I, don't re I cannot empathize with them because I've not experienced that. I can listen, and I can, but if you have experienced something as horrific as that, you hardly even have to say a word to them. Just a touch. There's something wonderful that happens with the Holy Spirit who speaks through your brokenness. So, don't look for those intense moments in your life story and look at how it ties into your passions. My guess is a lot of you have passions that relate to your life story. And finally, this last question, when you step back and look at your whole life before you on the calling quilt, what feelings do you have? What catches your attention? What makes you emotional? Those are some of the ways to try to identify a calling. All right. How many of you think in the last five weeks you at least have a better idea of what your calling might be? Anybody? Would anybody willing, be willing to share that with the rest of us? And you can take your mask off to say it. Could you put it into words? And by the way, here's the goal. Here's the goal. At the... Um, there, on the next page, summarizing a few sentences, the goal, I would love to see you get to the point where if you got on an elevator on the 10th floor with somebody and quickly got into a conversation about calling, by the time you got down to the lobby, you could explain your calling to them. So it's ten, in 10 stories. So you basically have 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds, whatever it takes, so that's, I would love to see you get to the point where you can explain your calling that way. So with that in mind, now that I've put the pressure on, who would like to share their 45 second or 30 second calling? Yes, go ahead. She shoots, she scores. Right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go one step further with you. Okay, now that you have, if that makes sense to you and that feels right, that feels right to you. 
Can you think of what you might do now with that? How might you approach your... Is this going to be like a, where your job and your calling completely overlap or they touch? You see that this is how that's how this works. That's how this works. And do you see what's going to happen here now is the next generation is also going to learn about their calling because you are going to help them. Beautiful. Somebody else want to share? What what's your calling? Do you know Mary Kay? Um, I got the words as I was sitting here. Um, translate children to their parents who don't know them out of my wounds being for being unknown, mm. seen and unheard. Translate children to their parents. So their Hmm. Or uh, why aren't you like your brother or yeah. stuff like that? So have you found yourself doing that? Uh, yes. And uh, just now, to me, I write notes to the parents. And um, you, I'm going to be using, this is all coming together, um, yeah. music and uh, learning how to be a drum facilitator. And having some fun with music and okay. collaborative. Awesome, awesome. By the way, after I hear from those of you who have a good idea of your calling, I'm going to ask those of you who have, would like me to help you figure it out with you, we'll go to you. But those, tell me, um, go ahead. You, no, you can. I would love for you to stand. You, and you can, if you feel safe, you can take your mask off. Well, I love that. That is a beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. And, and I want to point out something. Obviously, have you ever heard her sing? Like, it's ridiculous. It's amazing. But see what God is using, your skill set. He's using your skill set to, to pursue this calling. And it, it's a beautiful marriage of your skills and your, and your calling. Wow, that's great. Somebody else. This is cool. Go ahead. Um, I was having a conversation. Okay. Um, I was having a conversation with one of my daughters um, last week, and uh, she said, "You know, Mom, you've had a lot of trauma in your life." And I thought, "Have I really?" So I've had this week to even make a list of the different things. And um, I've had a lot of trauma because uh, I've lived a lot of my life. So I'm coming to the point now that the last years, I want them to count. And um, I have lost a child. Mm -hmm. I was an unwanted baby. And um, so I grew up with that uh, notion that I, I was not important because my family was already complete and happy as it was, mm. but then she got pregnant again, and that was just not in the plan. And so I lived all of my life, the years that I was in that home, uh, knowing that they didn't care if I was there or not. So, in, uh, you know, I've got a long story, but. Um, 
just uh, looking through my life, I have had a lot of different areas of pain. Mm -hmm. And um, it's true that it's a lot of times a person will say, um, you've lost a child, haven't you? And then that person and I can talk. And so I feel like that I have had um, a ministry that was on point for certain yes. things. Mm -hmm. And um, the one, one of the things that, uh, that God uh, gave to me was being a child who uh, was just not in the plan. Uh, my my mom never went to school activities, mm -hmm. never took a personal interest in the things that I felt were important. And uh, I felt like um, if I have children, uh, I, and I am going to give it my best shot. There you go. Good and, for you. Um, so through the years, I had two children yeah. I, uh, that lived. I had a son who did not live. And um, God has given me the, the ministry with my children mm -hmm. to make into them something that I wish awesome. I had had. You awesome. Know? Thank you. Um, Thank you. But that's, all, that's, uh, that's wonderful. That's God. Can, God will will continue to use you and bring people into your in, into your life who have had that same level of trauma. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Somebody else, you're calling. Yes, uh, well, go right ahead. If either of you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so I'm a two. Um, and I, I feel like I can look back at my life and see, I am only 25, so I mean, a little part of my life, and see the unhealthy parts of my life and how I'm kind of entering the healthy aspects. Um, and I went through family rejection pretty bad, um, and that's why I'm in Indianapolis. I wanted to start over with my husband and... Um, I just wanted to be wanted and, and to belong. So then, you know, the unhealthy part, I just kind of like lost, I think it was like the second or third week, third week when you talked about how twos can like lose their calling if they're living in that unhealthy um, part of their life. That was me for quite some time. Um, but I have always had this heartbreak for widows. Mm. Um, and just the loneliness that they experience, even before I got married. And um, I, I'm starting to realize that I just want people to be heard, and I want them to be and feel like they're wanted. Um, and uh, I don't know why my heart's beating so fast. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> so you, let me ask you this. Um, have, you, have you purposely sought out people, widows or others who? Yeah. And what happens when you do? It's, it's this beautiful relationship and connection. And, you know, my grandma just passed, but she was a widow and we grew up so close. But we formed this bond that we didn't have yeah. before that. And same with my aunt and a few others. But... I have, I work with kids who have autism mm -hmm. and, you know, I just never really thought about why I picked that and I realize it just breaks my heart when they can't communicate because yeah. oftentimes they can't and they're not heard yeah. and oftentimes they're misunderstood. So I think, I think my calling and my career are intersecting. There you go. Yeah, it sounds like your calling might be, I understand you, and I will give you a voice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's really cool. Thank you. And by the way, someday, weeks or a year from now, a young 
lady or young man and say, when I was younger and I was struggling, I remember this woman who understood me and gave me my voice. And that will be your legacy. Yes? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm glad somebody real young spoke. So, like, how, how much into your destiny can you be when you're young and you don't have a lot of experience? You're going to have 20 or 30 or whatever yeah. years down the road. What's, you can, no matter how young you are, you can step into, into the, call, the summons on your life, no matter how young you are. But um, it's going to be, it's not going to be particularly... The younger you are, the more general your calling is going to feel. The older you get, the more specific your calling will become. So much so that if you're paying attention to it, it becomes a destiny. Good. Great question, by the way. Yeah, okay. Brooke? So I wanted to share this for a couple reasons. One, um, because when I went through this with Real Moms, I left feeling, it was a lot of information to download, and I left feeling with a lot of clarity, but what's happened as I've continued to download all the information is more clarity, Um, and that's really cool. So it's to encourage everybody that even though this five week was like, wow, like in the weeks ahead, there'll still be a lot to come. Um, So I had said I felt like I was operating in my calling because I love I love working in children's ministry. Children are um, my my passion and teaching them the love of God. But what I'm learning is specifically broken families is where God is using me. Mm-hmm. Um, after going through a divorce myself and learning in a very it was not easy, but learning how to operate as a two home family still, where we respect and honor God in our relationship divorced and our children still feel that they have a whole family we are not special and God is continuing to bring and this is my avenue I meet so many families and kids through children's ministry here and every week I meet a new mom who out of nowhere shares with me that she's recently separated or going through a divorce and then I'm able to provide a safe place for those kids during their new reality too let me see if my assumption is right Every, and every time you engage someone, you become more confident in sharing your life with them. Mm-hmm. And every time you have a conversation with them, you feel a better, you better know what to say. Yes. Right? That's because the more we practice our calling, the more we actually get good at it. And the more we start to see the results of it. When you start to see your legacy, even in little bits, better at it you just you grow in it now we can also add in people who are like I don't know what my calling is let me see if I can help and Linda you're gonna have to cut me off when I need to be cut off you got a few more minutes a few more minutes okay <laughs> so you're here's what I want you to do when you go into your groups see this conversation we're having um, have this with each other okay I'll take I'll take a couple more Anybody want to venture saying, I don't know what it is, help me out? Okay. So tell me, tell me where you are in, the, in your thinking. Okay, here's where I'm at. Um, the one epiphany that I have had is when you said something along the lines of the unhealthy portion of your personality, I'm a nine, can smother Mm-hmm. your calling mm-hmm. and I think that's what's happened to me okay. so you know I like the broken places of the world I'm upset about everything but I stuff it because I don't want to feel it mm. so I have no passion mm. interesting so, no, I, so, yeah, um, I'm stu- so I'm stuck okay so so the w- here's what's going to happen now that you've said this out loud and you're looking at it on the table. I know, and my heart's pounding. Yeah, you've said this out loud. Um, you need to keep saying it out loud to the people who love you and uh, I believe that God will allow you to start feeling. And when you're observing the world and you feel something, write it down. 
record it somewhere so you can look at it again. In other words, we're trying to get, you need to get what's inside out so you can look at it and analyze it. And God's gonna, he's, he's listening right now, so he's probably going to uh, give you more emotion that you've had. Pay attention to it, write it down. Um, I had one other yeah, uh, go ahead. epiphany going through my, yeah, my go ahead. calling quilt, which looks like I threw up on the page. <laughs> Um, it, it actually does, but it does. <laughs> um, when I when I looked back on my happy moments, my happy um, times in my life, I was connected um, to people, friends mostly, who got me, who pursued me, and wanted to be with me. And I haven't had that for a number of years. I, I, so I have years and years now of, of disconnection on an intimate level with anyone. Okay. So that's kind of compounded again my lack of so passion. I'm going to take a risk here and suggest something that you may be true, but you're going to have to test this out. Um, experiment with this. Look for people like you who are having a hard time with their emotions, hard time with connecting. Keep your eyes open and see if God doesn't bring them your way because you, have an under, you know already what they're feeling. You'll be able to have an honest conversation with them and they'll get you and you'll get them. It may be that that's why you're here, is to say, I want out of where I am. Who wants to go with me? So try that out. And I bet you you're going to meet some people even tonight who say, Lisa, I'll go with you. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Sorry, it's a little sweaty. <laughs> it's a little moist. <laughs> <laughs> when I did this last week at this conference, <laughs> the room was it was all women um, it was it was like a revival <laughs> broke out people were weeping hugging it was extraordinary such is the power of calling it is so power it is why I've given my life to it honestly I love to see it I mean watching you guys, watching somebody get it and the energy picks up and the voice changes in your eyes. It's a beautiful thing. Keep working with each other on it and we're probably, I need to end now and let you go into your small groups. But let me just, uh, if I can, you have to pardon me for a second here because uh, I, I need to talk about how I can serve you or others for a second. And I'm just gonna, can I be really frank with you about some things? I do these workshops Sometimes I host them myself. I've got one coming up. Um, other people, um, there's a group of teachers at Carmel High School have asked me to do eight or 10 of them. Are gonna, I'm gonna do a workshop for them, this workshop for them. Um, I do it for organizations. I do it for executive teams. I, so this workshop, if you know of someone or a group, I, I'll do it for a group as small as five, um, but let me know. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to, you know, duplicate this for you, and you could help sponsor it with me. I, I, here's what I want to be frank about. I'm not getting paid by Grace Church ever, just so you know that. You are not charged in the church. I'm not getting paid. This is my pro bono. This is my service to, to Grace And um, so I, I want you to know that. But the workshops, the reason why I tell you that is the workshops are $100 a person. So when I... Or hundred dollars a person. I also do one. -on -one uh, this is going in and out, isn't it? But that's okay. I'll just uh, need it. But um, also, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which essentially, if you can imagine this workshop, just face to face with me for three hours. So I will sit for three hours and go through. I go through everyone's. Go through their life story. Go through the walk. Their enneagram. Their skills. And I actually write, I write their, their calling quilt as they're telling me this. So I offer that. That's expensive. 
just telling you, just being honest with you. But I'm happy. Um, some people give that as gifts. Uh, there are, you can actually go on my website, buy a gift certificate. Um, so I do that. And I also do corporate consulting. I have a couple of churches that I'm doing staff consulting with. I do it with um, a couple of for-profit organizations. So if I can serve you or the people in your life, the people you love, the people around you, please reach out to me. I've got, I'm leaving my, um, at my cards over there. There's a one sheet that describes what I do. Brooke? Next question, um, the woman blessing, does that include like kind of a after, like for those that feel like God is pulling us in there, you meet with people to help them get clear on like, yeah. and bring forth ways to then approach that? Yeah, so what I do. And uh, everyone who's gone through that, I consider alumni, and we stay in touch sometimes. I'll have co- a cup of coffee with somebody just to touch base. But yeah, so it's essentially it's five hours with me one-on-one. So at any rate, that's it. Enough of my marketing. Also, my books are here. So that's 10 bucks for the book if you want to buy the book. But um, that's it. I love you guys. I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity to do this with you. I hope it was helpful. Reach out to me um, if... I never gave my cell phone number out when I was pastor. My cell phone's on my card, so um, things have changed. Um, At any rate, um, I guess, Linda, they can go to their small groups now? Yes, and there's also five of the Road Back to You books, if you guys want one and didn't get one a few weeks ago. They're $10, as well as Dave's, and cash or check, because I don't have Christine here to run. I don't have Venmo or any of that, so if you want it. Come buy it. I can take cards.